Once, there was a wicked sprite that enjoyed playing tricks on others. He was one of the most mischievous sprites that ever lived. One day, he was in a really good mood. Do you know what wicked sprites do when they're in a good mood? They craft something terrible and interesting. This sprite thought it would be a good idea to make a mirror. It was no ordinary mirror. It had some strange powers. Anything that was beautiful, pure and good looked ugly, terrifying and evil in the mirror. Those things that were already good for nothing and a sore to the eye looked even uglier and even more horrific. The sprite was delighted to find that the mirror grinned whenever someone had a good thought. He showed his precise mirror to all the little sprites in his school and there were hoots and screeches of delight. They were glad to have the mirror and flew around holding it all the time. They looked at the people through it and eventually there wasn't a single person who didn't look ugly or distorted. In their excitement, they flew higher and higher until they were close to the stars. Suddenly, the mirror grinned and shook so much that the sprites couldn't hold it any longer. It went crashing through the skies and shattered into a million pieces, some as big as a person and others as tiny as a grain of sand. It was only after it broke that the mirror worked even more evil than ever before. Anybody who got a grain of the shattered mirror in their eye saw the world as a bleak and ugly place. Some people got a splinter in their heart. Then the mirror sucked all the love out of the heart and turned it into a lump of snow, cold and cruel. Some of the broken pieces were as large as window panes. Some shards went into people's spectacles and even when they looked at their friends through them, all they saw were horrible, distorted creatures. The shattered glass dust floated around in the air. The evil sprite was delighted because the mirror was working better than he'd ever hoped it would. This mirror is my greatest invention ever. The greatest indeed. Let's check how it works. Everything should look disgusting in this mirror. <laughs> Just look at this. It's so ugly. <laughs> <laughs> Look, it's so skewed. <laughs> Our teacher's a genius. Excellent. This mirror works very well. And now, my little trolls, show this mirror to the whole world. Let's spread discord and confusion among the people. We will get all humans to look into the mirror. Look at these ugly reflections. Let's find all of them. That's good. Shards of the broken mirror will bring even more evil to the world. <laughs> They lived next door to each other, but, oh, anybody who saw them playing together would have thought they were brother and sister. The town was so crammed with houses that the people had no place for gardens. They were content with a couple of flower pots. But the children had something just about as good as a garden. At the place where the roofs of the two houses met, they had large wooden boxes with vegetables and lovely rose bushes. Sometimes they took their stools and sat among the bushes and pretended that they were in their own big garden. But when the winter came, the children could no longer sit outside. They had to be content with playing inside the house. One day, Gerda and Kay were sitting by the window in Kay's house. Kay's grandmother, who was looking at the snowflakes, said quietly, The white bees are swarming. Kay and Gerda looked at her in surprise. Grandma, do the bees have a queen? Kay asked. Oh yes, they do, said Grandma. Where the swarm hangs in thick clusters, she flies there. 
Sometimes she flies into towns and peeps in through the windows. When she does that, the most beautiful patterns form on the window pane. Have you both seen this happen? Kay and Gerda nodded. They'd seen it many times, so Grandma was telling the truth. That evening, when Kay was sitting by the window alone, he saw something remarkable. He noticed that one snowflake was larger and prettier than the rest and sparkled in the moonlight. The flake of snow grew larger and larger, and at last it was like a young lady dressed in the finest white gauze made of a million little flakes like stars. She was so beautiful and delicate. But she was made of dazzling sparkling ice and was so full of life. She turned around to look at Kay. She nodded towards the window and beckoned with her hand. Kay was frightened and jumped down from the box. It seemed to him as if, at the same moment, a large bird flew past the window. The next day was very different. There was snowfall at first, but afterwards the sun shone brightly. Kay and Gerda cheered up because green leaves were sprouting on the trees, the birds were singing and the windows were thrown wide open. That summer was very special because the roses that bloomed were prettier than ever before. Gerda learned a hymn that mentioned roses. She sang it to Kay and he liked it very much. They immediately sang it together. The rose in the valley is blooming so sweet and angels to send there the children to greet. They felt so good after singing it that they went around kissing the roses. They enjoyed that summer thoroughly and their memories were full of fresh rose bushes, warm sunshine and laughter. Kay, we haven't taken care of the flowers for quite some time now. Yes, we have to clean it up. Can you help us with the cleaning? First, let's pull out all these weeds. Good job! Now the flowers can grow without any hindrance. What's next? I think we have to cut down all the dry branches and leaves. We need hedge clippers for this job. If the branches grow longer than they are now, they will look untidy. We should trim them down. Excellent! Now we need to water the flowers. We need a watering can. What is this book you have in your hands, Gerda? This is an encyclopedia of animals. We need to place each animal close to its own silhouette. Of exactly! This is an... Of course! The reindeer li That's right! This is a giraffe. This is a horse. It can carry goods and be... There are so many amazing animals that live in the world. I'm so glad my teacher gave me this book. By the way, we had singing class today at school. I learnt a lovely song. Wow! That's great! Go ahead and sing it. Okay! The rose in the valley is blooming so sweet And angels descend there the children to greet Now that's such a beautiful song We've made it awesome, together The roses will bloom even brighter What a beautiful day It's been a great day We've made it awesome, together. Kay and Gerda sat outside talking as the clock tower struck five. And almost at the same moment, Kay felt something fall in his eye. He rubbed his eyes and splashed water on it, but whatever it was wouldn't come out. It was one of the splinters from the magic mirror. Another piece struck his heart, and even though it didn't hurt him, it slowly changed his heart into a lump of ice. Poor Kay had changed. He looked at the roses and made a face. How ugly those roses are. They are crooked and dull, said Kay. Gerda was surprised. 
Kay had never spoken like that before. She brought out her book of animals and they looked at it as they had done many times. But Kay closed the book shut and said, I don't want to look at these ugly, horrid animals. Kay was so grumpy and unkind that Gerda left sadly. When she came to listen to Grandma's stories, she was surprised to see Kay smirking. He stood behind Grandma and imitated the way she told stories. He's never done anything like this before, thought Gerda. What's happened to Kay? Kay imitated others too, and it wasn't pleasant at all to watch him. Time passed by quickly, and before long it was winter again. All the little boys and girls in the town went to play in the snow. Kay hardly ever played with Gerda now. One day he took his sled and went to play with the other boys. The boldest boys often tied their sleds onto a carriage or cart and took a great ride. Kay was feeling very bold that day. When he found a pure white sled passing by, he decided that he would tie his sled onto it. Inside the carriage was a woman wrapped in white fur, and she wore a matching white fur cap. The sled rushed through the snowy slopes, and Kay found it very enjoyable at first, but when it picked up speed and crossed the town, Kay was very frightened. Finally, the sled stopped. The lady stepped out and called over to Kay. Come here and sit with me. You look cold. I'll wrap you in my bearskin. She wrapped Kay and kissed him on the forehead. The kiss was colder than ice and it went all the way to his frozen heart. As the sled took off again, the Snow Queen kissed him once more. Kay forgot his grandma, parents and Gerda. He cuddled up near the Snow Queen's feet and slept. I'll show you the games we like to play. Sledding is my favourite game. Help me. Good job. Let's do this one more time. That's enough. I'm bored of sledding. Let's make a snowman. Our snowman looks nice, but we need to dress him up a little. Are you kidding me? These clothes would be right for a scarecrow, not a snowman. Yes, this is exactly what I want. Wow, I can see a beautiful sled down there. I'd like to sled on it. We have to tie my sled to it. I do this often with my friends. Can you help me get there? Help me get to that beautiful sled. There is no way we here. We can't move here. Good job. Thanks a lot for your help. Let's go and don't stop. Did you ever wonder what happened to Gerda after Kay went missing? Gerda waited and waited by the gate, but Kay did not come back. In the evening, she went to see the boys playing on their sleds. Did you see Kay? She asked. Oh yes, he tied his sled onto a big white sled and left the town, said one of the boys. Gerda was very sad. She waited and waited for Kay right through until spring. I wonder where Kay is. I hope he's safe, she thought one day. Don't worry, he's safe. The warm sunshine spoke softly. But Kay has gone forever, she wept. No, that's not true, the swallow sang. Somehow, Gerda felt better after that. She wondered what she ought to do. 
She went home and put on her favourite red shoes. She went to the river and spoke sadly to it. River, did you take my beloved Kay with you? Please take these shoes and give him back, she pleaded. She threw the shoes, but they were washed back onto the river bank. I think I'll throw them farther, thought Gerda. Suddenly, she saw a boat lying among the rushes. She got into it, and from the boat, she threw her shoes as far as she could. The boat rocked and began to drift away from the shore. Gerda was scared, but she held on tight to the boat. I never thought it would be so frightening to travel on a boat all by myself, she thought. She drifted towards a cherry orchard with a little cottage right in the middle of it. Standing outside the cottage was an old woman with a crooked stick in her hand. Help! Save me! Gerda cried out. The woman looked up sharply. And before long, she came rushing towards the stream and gently lifted Gerda off the boat. Where were you going all by yourself in that boat? asked the woman. Gerda told her about Kay and asked the woman if she had seen him, but she shook her head. The woman liked Gerda very much and she'd always wanted a daughter like that. She knew a bit of witchcraft, though she was a nice and harmless woman. All she wanted was to have Gerda live with her. I'm sure the rose bushes in my garden will remind this little girl of her home and her friends, thought the woman. I'll use a bit of magic to hide them. She waved her crooked stick. The girl looked everywhere, but the woman was nowhere around. Without waiting for a moment, Gerda pushed open the rusty gate and ran out as fast as she could, even though nobody was chasing her. Okay. How did I forget you? said Gerda. I must look after you. Spring and summer have passed and it's autumn already. Back in the cherry orchard, it had been spring forever. But outside, the leaves had turned yellow and autumn was fast approaching. This is such an amazing place. There are a lot of roses here. They remind me of Kay. I must find him. All right, darling. But before you leave, can you do me a favour? Please go to the garden and gather some cherries for me. Sure. She's such a good girl. But I'm afraid that something might happen to her. It would be safer if she stayed with me. We should hide all the roses so that they won't remind her of Kay. Can you help me? That's good. Yes. Good job. I've gathered all the cherries in your garden. I have to leave now. All right, my dear. Will you allow me to comb your hair before you go? wonder where I left my hairbrush. Can you see the hairbrush? Where can it be? There it is. Thank you. Magic comb. Please help this little girl forget her past and stop worrying. Well, this is it. Oh, I feel so light and free. I really like your house and this garden, but I can't help feeling like I've forgotten something. It's because you are tired, my little child. I have a room for you. You can rest there a while. I've not been there for a long time, so you will have to clean up the room. We need to clean the room. I see a cobweb in the corner of the ceiling. We'll brush it away. Let's fix the curtains. Now we need to make the beds. We have to remove that basket. Let's put some books in the shelf. Ah, oh, roses! The roses were missing in the garden. Oh, how could I have forgotten about Kay and our roses? I must leave. I need to go now. 